let's take another example of solving an LPP by using simplex method in this solution we will see the case of unbounded solution and how do we know from the table that it is a case of unbounded solution so as usual start with step 1 converting into standard form okay so let's start with this constraint uh, our maximization objective function is same z is equal to x1 plus 2 x2 note that here we have only x1 x2 there is no coefficient of x3 in the objective function and that is possible so let's start with the first equation minus 2 x1 plus x2 plus x3 we want to make it equal to 2 so we will add a slack variable as 1 as it's not paying any difference in the objective function we add it with 0 coefficient for the second constraint minus x1 plus x2 minus x3 we want to make it equal to 1 so we add here slack variable s2 which will be added in the objective fu uh, function with zero coefficient now with the non-negativity restriction or restriction on the variables x1 x2 x3 s1 and s2 okay now second step is to get the initial basic visible solution to get initial basic visible solution so for that we will substitute the variables x1 x2 x3 to 0 equal to 0 in these equations so what this will give you this will give you from the first equation s1 is equal to 2 and second equation will give you s2 is equal to 1 now we will move to step 3 step 3 is forming the first simplex table so in this table now we enter the cost cost comes from the objective function the coefficient of x1 is 1 coefficient of x2 is 2 now we see there there is no x3 so it means its coefficient is 0 coefficient of s1 is 0 coefficient of s2 is 0 and the coefficient of s1 s2 from cj is 0 now s1 comes in the first equation s1 here so we will write the corresponding entry in the first row the coefficient of 2 in this case we say that uh, coefficient of x1 sorry it is minus 2 so we have to take the number with sign so it is minus of 2 for x2 it's 1 for x3 1 s1 is 1 s2 0 and right hand side is 2 similarly the for s2 when we are using this here the coefficient of x1 is minus and coefficient of x3 is also minus so we have to include this sign here so for x1 it is minus of 1 for x2 plus 1 x3 minus 1 there is no s1 so 0 s2 is 1 and then 1 now what is the next step next step is to calculate the value of zj and cj minus zj zj is 0 multiply minus 2 0 multiply minus 1 gives you 0 so as these both numbers are 0 we will get zj as 0 for all these values now we will calculate cj minus zj so which is 1 minus 0 which is 1 2 minus 0 2 0 0 and 0 now as per the rule we have to select the maximum column okay so it means x2 will be the incoming variable now to identify what will be the outgoing variable we calculate ratio which is 
2 and 1. We have to divide this RHS with 1. So this gives you 2. This will gives you 1. From here we will be selecting the minimum. So we have S2 is outgoing variable. Okay. So which gives us 1 as the pivot number. So now in new table S1 will remain in its position. In place of S2 we will have x2 ok now we will do the calculation so for the first step uh, we will first write the row for x2 so this old row divide by the pivot number pivot number is 1 so it means we will have the same numbers in the row as dividing by 1 will not make changes now for the uh, S1 we will do the calculation by using the formula that I used in the previous videos for new row we say that it is equal to old row minus number above or below by what multiplied by the number in the new row of the new table ok so we are doing for s1 so what are the numbers for s1 minus 2 1 0 ok let me write at the correct position so that you will not get confused so this is for s1 old row means row in the first table it is minus 2 1 1 1 0 2 minus number above or below the pivot so what is the number the number is 1 multiplied by the number in new row which is for this one in the new table for x2 that is minus 1 1 minus 1 0 1 and 1 so when you calculate it you will get here minus 1, here 0, here you will get 2, here you will get 1, here minus 1 and here you will get 2 minus 1 as 1. Now we will enter the details here. Minus 1, 0, 2, 1, minus 1 and 1. The coefficient of S1 is 0, cost of X2 is 2. Now we will calculate Zj and Cj minus Zj by our formula. So Zj, 0 multiply minus 1 plus 2 multiply minus 1. 2 multiply minus 1 will give you minus 2. 0 multiply 0, 2 multiplies 2. This gives you 2. Here, minus 2. 0, 2 and 2. Now, we will calculate Cj minus Zj. So, it is 1 minus of minus 2 gives you 3. 2 minus 2, 0. Uh, this is positive of 2. Here, 2, 0 and minus 2. So, what we have to do next is to select the maximum. So, 3 is the maximum number. So, it means in the next table, x1 should enter. So, to check which variable should be leaving, we divide this 1 and 1 by the elements in the key column. So, it is divide by negative of 1, divide by negative of 1, which gives you minus 1. So, as both are negative, we cannot take them out. So, this, this represent here the case of unbounded solution. So, it means here we don't have any variable to enter the basis. So, in this case we say that 
no optimal solution exists for this problem because it is an unbounded solution okay thank you